Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'd like to tell you a Bible story. You know, the Bible's a big book, but it can be broken up into two main parts. There's the Old Testament, full of stories about God and his relationship with the nation of Israel, and the New Testament, full of stories about Jesus and his followers. Today's story, the story of the nervous servant, can be found in the Old Testament, in the book of 2 Kings, in chapter 6. So the Bible says there was a servant. And this servant doesn't have a name in the Bible, so we'll call him Hank. Hank, the servant, was a good servant. He did what his master asked him to do. His master was an incredible man. His master's name was Elisha. And Elisha was a prophet. And a prophet was someone who would hear things from God and tell other people. He would hear what God was saying and tell those things to other people. So Elisha was a very important person in the nation of Israel, and Hank was there to help Elisha. Well, Elisha had a lot of work to do lately because he was helping the king of Israel. He wanted to protect the king of Israel. And the reason he needed to help protect the king of Israel, because there was another nation, the nation of Aram. And the king of Aram wanted the king of Israel. He wanted to capture the king of Israel and probably kill the king of Israel. So the king of Aram was constantly trying to figure out, how can I grab the king of Israel? How can I kidnap the king of Israel? So he would get a big group of, of soldiers and lie in wait, waiting for the king of Israel to pass by. But every time he chose a place to wait, God would tell what the king of Aram was doing to Elisha, and Elisha would go to the king of Israel and say, don't go that way. The king of Aram is waiting for you, and he'll kidnap you. So the king of Israel went, great, I'll go the other way. Time and again, the king of Aram would hide and wait out. The king of Israel would go a different way over and over and over again. Well, eventually, the king of Aram is frustrated and so furious, and he's looking at his people saying, how in the world does the king of Israel know where we're hiding? And one of them says, I know why. Why? Because there's a man named Elisha who hears from God, and he is warning the king of Israel and telling him where we're hiding. <gasps> the king of Aram is furious and says, where is this man? And he says, he's in the city of Dothan. So imagine this little city of Dothan. And there in Dothan, is probably a tent. And the tent, inside the tent, is where Elisha is hanging out and Hank, his servant. They're in this tent in the middle of Dothan. Now, I'm imagining that Elisha is feeling fine. God's been protecting me. God's watching out for us. Everything's okay. But Hank, his servant, is getting nervous because he's heard the rumors. He's heard that the king of Aram is on the lookout for Elisha and wants to get Elisha. If he's going to get Elisha, that means he's going to get Hank too. So Hank is nervous. And I imagine them in that tent and Elisha say, oh, we've had a pretty long day. I'm going to go to sleep. And, and Hank lays there also, but he can't get to sleep. He's so scared and so nervous. What's going to happen? And in the morning, Hank, who probably hasn't slept very much, wakes up and he peeks his head out of the tent and looks out and he, he sees something. He sees that the army of Aram is all around the city. Soldiers and horses and chariots surrounding the city, there to come and get Elisha and Hank too. Hank is freaking out. Hank talks back in and says, Elisha, Elisha, wake up! And Elisha, oh, oh, oh. what's going on? No, 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 there's an army! We're surrounded! There's soldiers and there's horses and there's chariots! Oh my lord, what shall we do? Elisha gets up, looks at Hank, and Elisha is cool, and he's calm, and he's all collected. And he says to Hank, his servant, he says, don't be afraid, Hank. There's no reason to be afraid. And I picture he puts his 
hand on his shoulder and says, don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now, I'm sure Hank is thinking, those who are with us, it's just you and me. It's just us. I can't defend you from all of them. What was it? No, no. Freaking out, freaking out, freaking out, freaking out, freaking out. And Elisha prays for Hank in that moment. He says, oh Lord, oh God, will you open his eyes so he may see? Will you open his eyes so he may see? Now, I'm sure Hank is thinking, my eyes are open. My eyes were open when I looked out the tent. And I saw all of these soldiers, and all of those horses, and all those. She goes, look again. Look again, Hank. So Hank pulls open the tent flap and sticks his head out. And sure enough, there are all those soldiers from Aram. And there are all those horses and all those chariots. But then he sees something. Out in the hills beyond the city of Dothan, out on the hills beyond the soldiers and the horses and the chariots of Aram, there is another army, a bigger army. And this army of soldiers and horses and chariots, the Bible says, they're on fire. They are on fire. They are so powerful. They are on fire. The army of God had shown up with power, with fire, and they were so much mightier than the little tiny army of Aram that was there to get Elisha and to get Hank. And you can read more in the Bible about this story. Amazing things happen. God uses the big army to defend Elisha and his servant. And he delivers the nation of Israel from the hands of the king of Aram once again. It's an amazing story. And I love this story because I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel fear. Sometimes I get afraid. And I look at how things are going in my life and I wonder, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And I like this story because it reminds me that if I ask God to open my eyes, maybe open the eyes of my heart, he'll let me see that he's actually there with me, defending me, guiding me, and doing good things for me. It's a wonderful story, the story of the nervous servant. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time for another Bible story.